Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. All right. So, this morning's lesson from Matthew. Uh, it picks off a series of parables uh, that Jesus will tell his disciples, the crowds following him, and all of us over the next couple of weeks. So I thought it might be a, a good moment to take a second and step back and look at this idea of parables, of what a parable is. Because for a long time, uh, I thought of parables as sort of uh, simple stories, as sort of a, an object lesson to illustrate a point that Jesus was trying to tell. Um, and I almost saw them as sort of children's sermons. Like, okay, so take the seed, go plant, and you know, see what comes up. Um, I'm not so sure anymore. Uh, Pastor Herb uh, gifted me with a series of books from his library on Jesus's parables, and those books were really good. And they really uh, kind of took my idea of parables as this simple story and flipped it upside down. Um, far from simple, uh, upon a closer look, it seems that parables are actually stories of the absurd. They aren't told to make us say, oh, I get it now. They're told to, they, they seem to be told to tell us, to make us say, what? Huh? And make us wonder, to make us think, to make us ask questions. And I'll give you an example. For, I'm sure many of you will remember the story of uh, the parable of the lost sheep, right? And Jesus starts out the story and he says, suppose one of you out there have a hundred sheep, and you lose one of them, who here would not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go look for the one? And the answer, of course, is no one. No one would do that, right? That would be dumb, because you would be leaving 99% of your investment in the woods without protection and going to search for one dumb lost sheep. <laughs> This story is absurd. So in keeping with the intention of parables to be absurd and to make us think, I want to make us all work a little bit this morning and examine this story about the sower, the seed, and the four soil. So take a look at your gospel lesson. And you're always allowed to cheat. You're always allowed to use your resources. And I want to study it for just a moment. I want to look at what might qualify as absurd in our story this morning. Yeah, okay, so, so how, much, how much of the seed does, does the sower plant? This is a trick question. All of it, right? So the sower plants all of his seed. How much of it does he waste? Three quarters of it, 75%. All right, how many of you out there, when in your business, in your profession, could waste 75% of your supplies, 75% of your product, 75% of your inventory, of your clients? Could you get away with that? No way. It's absurd. It's crazy. What else? What else strikes you as as absurd in this story. I want to look at what's this story about? <coughs> Just basically, what's it about? <laughs> scatter, yeah, scatter. You know, make sure you've got yeah, you're kind of throwing seed everywhere. I like that. <laughs> you know, you, you, you go you go everywhere. It's, a, it's about planting seed, right? And who's Jesus talking to? He's talking to people, but what, what are, where is he? He's on a lake. He's talking to a bunch of fishermen about farming. I mean, that's kind of strange if you think about it. You know, like what you know, again, if you're if you're gonna use an object lesson. Wouldn't you be speaking to the, you know, like, you'd be like, hey, let's talk about fish. No, he, he goes to farming. Kind of strange. And then the last one that struck me as absurd in this, I, and I don't know enough about this, so I'm going to defer to my farmer, my farmer in here, is, is the produce. 
All right. Back then, anybody want to take a guess on, on how many, how much what your return usually was on planting? How many fold increase you might get? Seven to ten. Seven to ten fold. All right. And that was like an average year. If you got a 30-fold, you know, if you produce 30 times what you plant, you, you, you could feed an entire village for a year. If you had a 100-fold, you could retire to a villa by the, by the lake. All right? And so when people, you know, when people would have heard this, even though they were fishermen, they would have been like, you're crazy, Jesus. That's not going to happen. So I want to, I but I, the, the absurdity that I want to focus in on, I mean, so it's just a crazy story all in all, but the absurdity that I want to focus in on is sort of a, uh, what, what Joe and Andy brought up, is, is, the, uh, is where the farmer scatters the seeds and how, how the farmer does that. And I'm struck by the fact that this planter doesn't seem to be a very good judge of soil. How many of us have ever planted something? All right. And, and, and Erica is the gardener in, my, in our family, all right? I dig holes, I carry bags of soil. That's my, that's my job. Um, but even I know that I probably should not plant seeds among rocks, among thorns, or on a dirt path. I'm struck by the, the fact that this farmer doesn't seem to care. What's more, we hear the description of the soil that is not conducive to growth, right? We hear what that looks like, but we never hear what the good soil looks like. Is the good soil a separate area of ground? Or is it pockets within the areas that appear to be inhospitable? And I'm left wondering, what might this absurd wastefulness by the farmer say to you, to me, and to our church today. What if we are called as individuals and as a church to go into areas that appear the least likely to respond to God's grace and mercy? Perhaps we are called to invest in people who look unlikely to be a good investment. Maybe the church has a mandate to waste itself and shower and spread grace on all we encounter. To me, this is why it's crucial that St. Peter's Lutheran continues to be a church with an open communion table and an open baptismal font. We understand our holy communion and holy baptism to be gifts and actions by and from our God. If this is true, who are we to limit access to these sacraments where God promises the possibility of an absurd harvest, even amongst the most unlikely of soils and the most unlikely of people? Yes, there are people who bring their child to be baptized to make grandma and grandpa happy, right? And yet, what if that splash of water, what if a promise from Scripture, what if the unconditional forgiveness of sin is enough to change the course of their lives forever. Yes, there are people who come to church once a year and they take communion because they don't want to have an argument with mom and dad. And yet, what if that taste of bread or that sip of wine with the words for you are enough to break them free from old wounds and old brokenness? What if for their whole life they, they longed for someone to say, you are worth it. I love you for God to say yes to them. For God to say you matter. And communion and baptism are tangible proof of God's yes to our world. We are free to spread God's grace and mercy like there is to no tomorrow. Because we know there is a tomorrow and it belongs to God. I wonder if it's important that this story is called the parable of the sower and not the parable of the four soils. This title puts the emphasis on 
spreading, on sharing, on giving away, rather than judging, hoarding, or punishing. Perhaps the absurdity of church is a call to open ourselves up in the midst of all the evidence and temptation in this world to close ourselves in and down. And you have opened this church up. And you've given me license as your pastor to open up to the community as well. I'm empowered to do weddings and funerals for community members who have never set foot in a church. We host 4-H groups. We host yoga classes, service sororities, and community education events uh, on concerns such as addiction or domestic violence. And yet, does being church stop at service and events being held into, inside a building? You are sowing and investing time, love, and money beyond our walls. Thanks to your generosity, we are able to partner with a local Baptist church and help expand their after-school program to at-risk youth. Yeah, we're working with the Baptists. That's right. You heard it. <laughs> We have volunteers watering and tending a, a garden across town. It's not on our property. It's not for us. It's to help provide healthy food options to people in need, people who have to shop at Sunoco for their groceries. We have men involved in hosting and cooking for multiple prayer breakfasts around town to care for men in our community through food, fellowship, and faith development. So what will be the results of these and other ministries that you offer in your lives? Maybe nothing. Maybe everything. <clears throat> I want to end with a story. Two weeks ago, we hosted a day camp here at St. Peter's, and uh, many of you generously uh, donated food, snacks, uh, came and cooked, uh, volunteered, uh, you gave funds so that we could provide this experience to any and all who came free of cost. We had 30 kids attend. We had roughly 10 from our church, 10 from St. Paul's Lutheran, and another 10, we're not real sure where they were from. <laughs> but there were these four kids who came together who were always talking. They weren't paying any attention and seldom participated. It was sort of like they were in their own world. And they weren't able to come on Friday. And one of the counselors confessed to me. She said, Jim, I'm actually a little relieved. <laughs> because I, I wasn't sure of the impact we were having on them. And I was concerned about the impact that they were having on the other kids. I said, oh, you're having an impact, I said. She said, how can you know? I said, I was one of those kids. <laughs> I can still remember day camp at my home church. We had these, we had the air conditioner vents. Do you, do you know what I'm talking about on the floor? And I was a Star Trek fan, and I just remember pl think, playing that that was the, uh, uh, the thing that you could beam up from. And like, I mean, that was all I did for the entire week. <laughs> I must have killed my counselors and killed my pastor. I almost got kicked out of confirmation camp. I stopped going to youth group after confirmation. And yet the church never gave up on me. And for that, I think, go and sow love and mercy and grace, wildly and absurdly. Thanks be to God. Amen.